What's up guys? So welcome to game of the month. My game for this month is uh, God of War. This video is going to be a review of God of War. First of all, I didn't play the previous games, so I know that this game is very different from the previous games. The camera is behind the shoulder, and it's what's called a one-shot camera, and apparently this is the first time that a AAA 3D game has done this. In movies, is you know, when they, it's just when there's no edits. Uh, one take, and with games, when you go into cutscenes, it seamlessly moves the camera, so there's no cut. There's no gameplay cut cutscene, you know, like that. So I guess you can't you don't you can't even call it a cutscene anymore. It's just a scene. When it comes to the story, again, I haven't played the previous games, but playing this game, I understood what was going on. I wasn't I didn't feel like I was lacking in knowledge. I didn't feel lost. The director of this game didn't want to completely erase what had happened in the previous games, but it's not the same setting, the Greek mythology of the other games. This is now Norse mythology. One of the things that I absolutely love about the game is the facial uh, expressions. Um, this game was one of those games that they did performance capture on, and for characters like Kratos and Atreus, um, but Kratos especially because he is so cold and just he has no expression on his face in those moments where you can see just a little bit of an expression that they went that extra mile to to really portray it well to the player was so so worth it the gameplay is basically puzzles and a combo fighting he doesn't have his double swords now he has an axe and a shield uh, which which suits the Norse mythology, that Norse setting. There's a crafting system and a leveling up system, so this game uh, isn't a full-on RPG, but it has RPG elements, and I think it does it well. They're not too complicated. Um, when it comes to the crafting system, I did think that it was a little bit slow, so you could craft things for Kratos, but you could also craft things for Atreus. And a lot of the things that you could craft for Atreus, it just takes way too long because you want to craft things for Kratos as well. But then you've used it all on Kratos so that you have nothing left for Atreus. So it's like, ah. Kratos, they, they let you craft things easily where it's like it just it just costs like 750 or something like that and with Atreus it's like 10,000 gold or something like that it's like why so I kind of wish there was more of a balance there the puzzles they were clever puzzles they weren't too hard some of them as I will show right now did get have me a bit confused and, an, and another one I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this I don't it really made me see how bad I am at aiming it was actually really good research because I was changing the aiming camera and the actual camera, the speed of it, to see if it helped me with the aiming. It didn't and I was going to get Nick to do it for me but I, I was like, okay, no, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> Another thing that I absolutely adore about this game is the partner mechanics. Bioshock Infinite, Last of Us, this game, any Dragon Age game of Mass Effect, whenever you have a party or a partner that your character talks to or interacts with, it just, it, it sells it for me. I, I love that type of character development, especially when they jump off another character. Kratos and Atreus, he actually helps you. He actually is part of your combat. Um, and part of your combos as well. The world is not open, but the map is big. I like this because it keeps you focused. The way that you get to places is on foot and by boat. And the cool thing about when you're on a boat, there's a lot of conversation, I guess what you would call banter. There was one that concerned a hare and a tortoise. Like the witch's house? Unlikely. So what happens? They wager on a race between them. The hare is too confident of victory and foolish, while the tortoise is steady and disciplined. The tortoise wins. You haven't told a lot of stories, have you? When they get off, Kratos does say, talking is for when we're on the boat. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> 
So now that all the specifics are out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about what I think about the game. Um, and the first thing I want to mention is that it won Game of the Year. As some of you guys know, I voted for Celeste, the little indie game. <laughs> and I voted for it because I thought it would make the most noise if an indie game won Game of the Year. I thought it would be a great message to to gamers and developers uh, and publishers that, you know, these games are, are just as great. Personally, my Game of the Year was Red Dead Redemption 2 because uh, I just absolutely adored that game. And I hadn't played uh, uh, God of War yet. But that God of War took Game of the Year surprised me in a very good way. God of War is PS4 exclusive. So that it won Game of the Year being an exclusive to one platform, that blew me away. I was like, wow, this game must be really good. Playing it, it's not the best game. Um, that I've ever played and the replayability is kind of small for me. I wouldn't go back and play it all over again. It, it is the longest uh, God of War game, so there is a lot of content on it. I believe a full playthrough is like 30, 40 hours, um, opposed to the old, the, the other games, which were about 8, 10 hours. This is one thing that I'm starting to learn about games, is that the games that are more focused than the ones that are so broad are the ones that do better, I think. I mean, unless you have this perfection of The Witcher, you know, because they got everything so well with that game. Red Dead, it was so big. It was huge. Um, and a lot of people I, I saw saying, yeah, it's great, but I don't have time for it. So I think it's a good thing that games like this, single player uh, focused games, win these awards. You know, a lot of times it's like, well, game of the year, really, what does it mean? It means a lot for the developers and for the fans of that game, but it also it sends a message to the publishers, especially for people that feel like me, that single player is not dead. Multiplayer is, yeah, it's, it's popular right now because, you know, there's a lot of them um, and a lot of people like them and that's fine. People that love single player, we don't need rewards from what multiplayer gives us. We find our own rewards in single player, whether it's through the story, whether it's through the character development, whether it's through the gameplay, or even just things that you do off on your own. You know, when a game kind of like gives you the reins and it's like, this is your experience. You make what you want out of it. This is the story we have to tell, but now you take over. I think it's 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 supposed to be said. It's supposed to be shown to the gamers and to the and to the developers and publishers that this is still very much what we want to play or what a lot of people want to play. Don't forget about us. I mean, the stats go on with God of War. What didn't just win Game of the Year? It has a 94 Metacritic. There's a lot of God of War uh, games, but this is the highest rated. This is one of PS4's highest rated exclusive games. It sold over 5 million copies in just the first month of its release. You know, it's one of those games, again, that just represent what gaming is about. It's not just about what's popular right now. I think publishers and developers need to see that uh, need to look at games like God of War. They say so much about us as gamers. And if it's done with that passion and dedication that developers can give us in their skills, then that's, you know, that's all we want. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about single player games winning these achievements, winning game of the year. What do you think that message is? Or what do you think that message could be? If you haven't seen it already, I have a uh, game of the month, God of War talks. I'll link it in the corner right now. It should have popped up. I did a bunch of research and I did that video explaining who Kratos is, but that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.